Commissioner Gillette, Attorney Keenan, representatives of Pura, thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my lessons learned. I am Susan Heisinga, volunteer executive director of WPAA TV and Community Media Center in Wallingford, Connecticut. When advocates for the first community media nonprofit in Connecticut, Citizens Television in New Haven, knocked on my door in 1986 saying, Peg access is important to democracy. I thought, really? What is that? And now I know. It is discovering something every day that I did not know I needed. And this is the quintessential community media viewer experience. For four decades, I've been a volunteer in the community media movement. My professional credentials are in business systems and project management. I have advanced degrees in research and media. And from this experience and training, I'm offering my personal testimony today. Does it matter that you know that there are about 50 views a month for a 2015 video story that has been watched nearly 46,000 times? Or is it more important to know that the young Filipino American man who assisted with the video edit of the veteran story was more prepared when faced with a decision about enlisting three years later? One measure is qualitative, the other quantitative. Both demonstrate how community media adds value. Is it important that you hear it took six weeks for our summer youth team to produce a 34 second video about the 988 suicide line or that they struggled to create something from a youth perspective until they had a eureka moment on their very last day? Is it possible that struggling with this message and achieving a potentially award winning outcome is more impactful than the data suggesting the video is nearing 28,000 views? in seven months. Or that it if the weight of the world is too much to carry on your own, remember you're not alone. No matter what time of day, hope is only three numbers away. Nearly 50 million Americans struggle with mental health, and no time is the wrong time to ask for help. So, when feeling down or feeling blue, here's what to do. Call 988. It's never too late. What is meaningful community media? NECTA and the broadband companies suggest that views of a community TV channel are the hallmark of ascertaining value, and they also assert that no one is watching. Even if these channels were treated as an asset versus an albatross, this would be an imperfect measure. In addition to other viewing options, the innate value of facilities as places where people gather and engage and learn is excluded in this calculus. To be dismissive of the thousands of anecdotes in the assessment of meaning is a failure to comprehend meaningful. And a channel does not equate to community media. It's an asset, a mandatory asset that's undervalued and under-resourced, still in SD, with oblique channel guide references to it, administered by nonprofits, the cable companies cease their promotion, even though they're the ones with the cost customer data. And here's where I believe there's a failure to meet, never mind exceed, the specifications of Connecticut regulation. The landscape has changed. On this, there is consensus. Changes have been exponential. Production technology can be out of date in less than a year, and several media distribution platforms did not even exist a decade ago. The media proficiency or expectations of users is broader. PEG is now community media, and the term cable TV seems essential to limiting liability and community responsibility of broadband providers. Franchise areas were linked together as marketing territories for cable TV, so equating them with any other kind of condition is rather tricky. Community media is complicated. 
majority of Connecticut residents have no idea that there are laws, regulations, and grandfathered agreements to use public rights of way for commercial carriage of television content, or that within these arrangements with broadband companies, there is mandatory support for alternative non-commercial content, theirs. The general public does not distinguish community media from public media. And if they know there is a difference, they are often confused as to whether or not they have rights to participate if they're not cable TV subscribers. Often they have challenges locating their community media station. And once they've found it, it may be operated differently than they had heard about from someone in another part of Connecticut. Community media can be town specific or regional or embedded within a corporate structure here in Connecticut. It can be two miles away or 12 plus miles away, on a bus route or not, in a business park, town building, or town center. What's common is that they're each striving for non-editorial bias, that they're based on founding principles, yet they have archaic program design and delivery still, and they strive to provide some level of tools, stage, and training about media production. This is a two and a half minute excerpt of a 20 minute annual report. WPA TV has been honored three times in the last four years as best in the United States for its size. In conclusion, who walks in the door? People with huge egos or huge hearts, newbies or experts, learners, educators, creatives, the curious. Programs can be current or historic, of interest to people within a town or something about a town that would be of interest to the world. The who could be a person or a small group eager to inform, persuade, or preach. Topics are diverse in every way. Change is needed. And I urge you to use this study to build upon the best aspect of community media in Connecticut, that it's available in every community. But let's make it available in a manner that ensures that people know what it is so that we can bring people together with conversation, story, and transparency in the future. Meaningful community media is collaboration, not consolidation and local community TV stations can make a difference. What they can do remains limitless.